There's only one way to be a first-class citizen. There's only one way to be independent. There's only one way to be free. It's not something that someone gives to you. It's something that you take. Nobody can give you independence. Nobody can give you freedom. Nobody can give you equality or justice or anything. If you're a man, you take it. If you can't take it, you don't deserve it. Nobody can give it to you. So if you and I want freedom, if we want independence, if we want respect, if we want recognition, we obey the law. We be peaceful. But at the same time, at any moment that you and I are involved in any kind of action that is legal, that is in accord with our civil rights, in accord with the courts of this land, in accord with the Constitution, when all of these things are on our side, and we still can't get it, it's because we aren't on our own side. We yet don't realize the real price necessary to pay to see that these things are in force where we're concerned. And until we realize this, they won't be in force where we're concerned. We have to let the people in Mississippi, as well as Mississippi, New York, and elsewhere know that freedom comes to us either by ballot or by bullet. That's the only way freedom is gotten. Freedom is gotten by ballots or bullets. These are the only two avenues, the only two roads, the only two methods, the only two means, either ballots or bullets. And when you know that, yes, when you know it, when you know it, then you are careful how you use the word freedom. As long as we're going to sing up on, as long as you think, we're going to sing up on some, you come in and sing. I watch you. Those of you who are singing, are you also willing to do some swinging with some of these? No, this is true. They've always said that I'm anti-white. I'm for anybody who's for freedom. I'm for anybody who's for justice. I'm for anybody who's for equality. I'm not for anybody who tells me to sit around and wait for mine. I'm not for anybody who tells me to turn the other cheek when a cracker is busting up my jaw. I'm not for anybody. I'm not for anybody who tells black people to be nonviolent while nobody is telling white people to be nonviolent. So I, I just say in my conclusion, I know I'm in the church and I probably shouldn't be talking like this, but I, 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 but Jesus himself, he was ready to turn the synagogue inside out and upside down when things weren't going right. In fact, in the book of Revelation, they got Jesus sitting on a sword with a, sitting on a horse with a sword in his hand, getting ready to go into action. But they don't tell you or me about that Jesus. They only tell you and me about that peaceful Jesus. They never let you get down to the end of the book. They keep you up there where everything is, you know, non-bound. No, go read the whole book. And when you get in Revelation, you find that even Jesus' patience ran out. And when his patience ran out, he got the whole situation straightened out. He picked up the sword. So, 